Uh, good afternoon, everyone. So welcome to another episode of Liquid Brain. So today we're going to change gear a little bit again because we're not doing data analytics. So one of the important things about analytics is that it's not just about analysis and creating all the, the result in a numeric format, but also to try to generate a report to be able to send to other people. So there, there comes many ways. There are what we have used before, which is the data studio. You can also use AppSheet as front end. But uh, one of the way that you can do it within R Studio itself is actually use something called an R Markdown language. So it's very similar to LaTeX, where it's able to generate uh, cons a very consistent report just based on tags and here and there alone. So if you don't understand LaTeX, it's just a text preparation uh, language where normally we just use a Microsoft Word or you know Google Docs and so on. So those are the type as you go and you see what you get. But in this situation, it's slightly different where you use tags to specify what kind of output you want. So if you have a HTML background before, it's slightly similar, as well as if you have latex uh, uh, knowledge before, this is roughly similar. And in fact, uh, I think R actually uses a latex engine for their PDF preparation. So for to actually to prepare R Markdown, you just go to R Studio and you go to R Markdown over here where you open and it will ask you to key in the title and your author and output format. So there's many output format over here, but we're going to concentrate on PDF today where it's relatively straightforward and you can download as an attachment and you just send to other people. And while HTML, you have to let's say parse it to a website while word is a little bit of a problem because it's a closed system and sometimes it doesn't work as well so pdf is one of the the more well when you when you open a pdf format you can almost ensure that other people open the same file will be looking at the same thing so that's my uh usually my my document of choice for communications okay once you key that that will actually go into the first chunk which is the document informations Okay, usually followed by document information when you open it on default it will include like a, a global options so in this case it was set the echo to true we'll go through that later and include four so we'll go through that a little bit later well i include two links over here that you can actually go and read in depth what is r markdown and what does it do so before let before we go into the exact detail let's us define some goal and what a the thing that we have to do and we want to do today so first thing to accomplish is our uh, uh, the, the bold, so how to bold the text, well, how to italics the text, well, underline sadly not, not support in the R Markdown language, so I'm putting it here, but just to tell you that it doesn't work. <laughs> okay, so how to do, like, next thing is how to do hyperlink, headers, image, breaks, bullet, numbered, tables, uh, code chunk, output, and final, and lastly, we're going to do have a final assessment. So the final assessment is going to incorporate everything that you learn from like 1 to 12 over here, where we try to emulate a report, a sample CV that I actually do it in uh, LibreOffice. So LibreOffice Writer, if I'm not wrong. So we'll try to clone or reverse engineer that using our mock now. Okay, so let's, uh, let's before... Let us go into the content. So before we go into both, there are a certain thing that I need to talk about, which is how to you want to display the code chunk. Because it's fairly important when you generate a report that you want your code chunks to, to be displayed uh, in a certain way. Certain situation you want it to be displayed and certain you don't want it to be. Okay, so there, there's three things you need to kind of know here. First one is echo. So echo, uh, you, you see what happens later. This echo set to false, echo set to true. Evaluate set to true, evaluate set to false, and include set to truth, and include set to false. So there's three different uh, uh, tagline, and there are three different, uh, what is that called? Each of them with two different combinations, so it's that six combination. So let's just try to run this and see what happened. So how do you generate a PDF uh, directly from our studio is you go to this one called need the document. So you just press need, so that would actually bring a uh, uh, R Markdown calculation here to calculate your whole document. If you do have things that needs to be calculated for a long time, it will actually calculate for quite some time. Okay, then you will share a preview over here. So these are the the things that we we'll talk about, the document details. These are the first, what is that called? Things to accomplish, which is one, two, the number 13. And okay, so first of all, display option. You realize that for the first display option, let me see if I can do it properly. I hope that you all can see this. So for some display option, when the echo is set to false, so that will be the first one, when echo is set to false, the code chunk doesn't actually get displayed. 
so it will hide this gray column while if it's set to true you actually display the call the the code and it will display the answer so it will display the output okay so the second one so echo control if you want the code chunk to be displayed the second is evaluate so evaluate when you set evaluate to true uh, it will actually display the output if you set evaluate to false it will actually not display the output but it will of course display the the default code and so on if you don't put it a default okay lastly is include so if you include uh, set to true it will actually print out both the code chunk and the final output so it is include that in the report but if you, if you put include as false it will just disappear from the report and you can't see it basically so i think kind of straightforward enough where echo uh, controls the the code and evaluate controls the output and include controls both of them together so if you want a code to be displayed set a code to truth if you want your result to be um, displayed set evaluate to truth basically like that okay so if you don't put in anything it will actually set a default to be true for everything and it will actually display everything so if you want everything to display no need to care okay so uh just some basic syntax uh for the next part which is just a bold italics and so on so for both uh just put two star in front and behind the text that would indicate the middle needs to be bold and it will actually bold the text same with the you can also do it with underscore underscore so that's two underscore in front two underscore in the back so if you look at here you can actually see that this is a bold text uh quite i think this is fairly straightforward enough but this will not work Please do not put this in the R code chunk, otherwise it will not work properly. So try to put it outside because this is more of a text reporting. So a uh, similar concept can be applied for italics, which is one uh, asterisk in the beginning and one asterisk in the back. In the back. So that will actually italic the text. So sadly, underline not supported, so we are unable to do. So for hyperlink, uh, it's actually this part over here. So you don't have to look at the whole thing you just have to look at this part so the first thing is the first part of it is the text to display so hyperlink you should have two things the text to display to the user and the link a link to okay so the first if you the text to display has to be enclosed in a square bracket while the link will be enclosed in the uh, a round bracket so if you run this it will actually display it as like this so you can see that this is the link which is displayed and if you click here it will actually bring you to the website directly so this is a hyperlink so uh it will not change color automatically you want to change color we'll talk about it in our maybe future video so you it can actually change the color of the things but today we're gonna don't gonna do that okay so that's hyperlink square bracket followed by a round bracket where the square bracket will be displayed round bracket is the hyperlink that you want to include so the headers actually have many different levels so headers are always one uh, pound sign or the hashtag sign as young people say followed by a space and then the text so if you don't put a space here it will not work so i, I tried that it depends on how it works and it doesn't but for my case it doesn't work so you have to put a pound sign followed by a space before you actually put your your text in there okay so this same same thing with uh, the secondary and the tertiary so i believe there's five six levels so you try it yourself i do not want to i i'm not too sure about how many and but i only try until the level so you can get the first level is bigger second is uh, less big the third one is smaller and so on and so forth okay but it is getting very closer to the original text already so you might not want to use too many levels okay so the next one is image so image that you have to put something inside the uh the environment over here so if you can look at my desktop over there file so if you look at your desktop you have to include the, the profile picture over here so that will be the yeah, picture so that will be the picture that we want to display so this is the picture that we want to include in our report so if i look at our markdown over here you can actually see the, the image is being uh, displayed over here through uh, this thing okay so the image are very similar to a hyperlink where instead of uh, uh, instead of a hyperlink you just link the path to your image directly so that will bring uh, people to the image and that should be able to to be displayed directly in the page so the other thing that I want to include is that if I want the thing to go through the next page uh, you just do a uh, double space okay so if you don't put a double space in the back of the sentence it will not go into the next line so in this case it will be equivalent to the word of a, a backslash n 
So that will be a line break where if you do this uh, with a double space over here, you will go to the next line. If you don't do a double space, it will not go to the next line. Okay, so let's just close this. So let, let's just look at this again. So remember the, the image is in the same line now. So once I do a double space and I do need again, it should display the image on the next line. And yeah, let me just do this in again. Okay, so you can see the image has now shifted to the next line because of that double space of a line break. Okay, so bullet are fairly straightforward. It's using uh, uh, asterisk. Apostrophe, is there apostrophe? No, this is an uh, asterisk. So asterisk, remember a space before the actual content, while the secondary bullet point are using a plus sign. So in this case, you can kind of see that uh, this is bullet one, this is bullet 1.1, and this is bullet two and bullet 2.2. So you can actually go out to two levels, and if more levels, it might be a little bit more complicated for the computer to display. So this only we're gonna only gonna talk about two levels over here. So uh, similar rules apply to number list. But the problem with number list is that it's not as straightforward to display things like uh, um, what is that called at different levels because it is not natively support for like a uh, number list such as uh, one point one and two point two and so on and so forth. So we are using a hack over here. So it's not technically a, a, a true proper way to do it. But how you can do it is that you can actually see that uh, this is the one, this is in a different color. Because what I do is that I just put four, four space in front of this. Wait, uh, so one, two, three, four, you actually change it to, it, it functions as a tag basically. So so it will actually indent the, the list into a second tab and the third one to the third tab so remember small four different tabs if you want to move from uh, one list from one to the second list and so on and so forth i think that's clear enough because if you do one two it will actually uh, being recognized as the same level as the previous list and it will not actually put a sub level so it's not natively support so you have to put an indentation to separate out different levels in terms of number list Bullet, relatively straightforward. Number, a little bit of a hassle. Okay, the next one is table, which is like one of the really important thing over here because table is very, very commonly used for displaying data and so on. So how do you do that is that you put, you have two elements. The first one is a dash and the, sec the second one is a straight line over here. Uh, okay, so every time you need to put a vertical separation, uh, you put a straight line. Remember, they have to be at the same um, what is that called? The same position for each of the, the cell and you have to put a thing in between that. So of course, if you can add more level by just uh, copying the thing over and then just put more more levels down. So you can actually put your, your content in between and just put space until here. And oh, I'll just, I'm just going to copy this so that it's faster. So you can also do this to increase the number of cell that you have. You can also do this again to the cell we have. Let's just see what happens that we need again. So that would be able to, you, you should be able to increase your table as much as you want uh, using the method that I tried just now. Okay, it will take a while for you to need and see what happens. That was awkward. <laughs> we'll come back to that later. I'm not too sure why it doesn't want to generate. Sometimes it happens. Okay, so the, 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 the 11 one is actually our code chunk. So this is the thing that I talked about just now. Uh, echo means you want to include the code chunk. Uh, evaluate, you want to include the result. Where include, uh, you want to include the, both the code chunk and the result together. There's a lot more such as, you know, commands, message, warning, and the figures, okay? So there, there's a lot more that you can add over here, which I'm gonna just put it here. And what I'm gonna show you is how to include the plot, which will actually use as one, some of the, the syntax over here. So the last, last thing uh, for this session is how to actually include an R plot chunk. Okay, so in, in this case, we're gonna actually include an R plot. Actually, I haven't shown you how, is to go here, and I'm gonna do my camera a little bit here because I cannot see. Uh, is to include uh, an R code over here. So that will bring us up. That will, that will show a code chunk over here. We should just copy this and paste it over. So that will be able to 
So that will allow you to, to be able to run R code within this directly. Okay, so of course you can just put in like echo true or evaluate true, depends on what you want. Okay, so the next one is the, the complicated thing. Okay, so if we just run this, we'll get uh, the, the figure over here. Okay, so of course, the, these are all run based on default and you know it might look, not look as good as you want to. Okay, what we do is that you can actually change this. So figure align means you align the figure in the middle of your PDF page. Uh, figure width, figure height, self-explanatory. Uh, it's just the height and width of the figure. And finally, figure cap is the figure caption. Okay, let's have a look at how how it wants to how it will actually looks like. So there are there are a few things over here. So we are using a ggplot for this, which is why we need to include a library. And this should actually uses uh this actually uses a data set called MPG, which is the mouse per gallon fee efficiency for a few cars. Okay, so if you just run this chunk, you'll be able to see that the figure should look somewhat like this. So there'll be two figures. Okay. And if you run the last one, you will also have you have three figures. So if we actually need this, you will actually see something like this. Okay, let's scroll down. So this is the original one. You can see the two figures will actually be displayed uh, separately. They will not actually be clustered together, while the other three figures will be followed on the things down below. Okay, so that's basically the, the concept of uh, how do you run the you, you how do you do the basic uh what is that called let's go back to the beginning actually not here let's go back to the beginning on what we go through today so today we're going we have gone through bold uh we go through italics which is uh bold is two star two star italics one star one star underline not support uh hyperlink is square bracket link uh round bracket uh the uh, url header is a uh, hashtag followed by space and your actual title image is uh uh, exclamation mark square bracket followed by the path of your image in a round bracket a uh, line break will be a double space so every time you put a double space behind a sentence it become a double space something like this so then it will not show up because now currently it will show in the same line so if you just hyperlink everything sorry you just double space everything behind the, the sentence and it will actually change it to the next line just like Okay, so that's basically change everything to the next line. Uh, bullet is uh, asterisk, star, sorry, ast is asterisk, space followed by the title. And the secondary bullet is a plus sign, space followed by the title. Number list is uh, use the norm, just 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And if you need further um, sub number list, you have to use uh, four tabs to do the indentation. Sorry, four space to do one tab for the indentation. Okay. So tables uses dash and the straight line. Just make sure you, you wrap them nicely into a, a table-like format in your code and it will work. While our code chunk will be something like uh, if all so if all echo include command figures and so on, that's the syntax I've included. Roughly how do you plot an R plot is to put whatever you need to run, uh, put out whatever R code you need to run into the code chunk and then you can change the figure uh, alignment, size, and caption later on. Okay, so let's actually look at our final assessment before we go away. So let's just open the file. Uh, I'm gonna, so gonna get the thing from it. I'm gonna, okay. Sorry, not this file. Sample CV PDF, no, not this one, so this one. Okay, so this is basically the sample CV that we want to uh, emulate. So this is Jonathan Bond, which is the professional pizza killer. He lives in New York, and this is his picture. And he has, this is experience, this is the education, and this is the website, and these are the, the plot that I have. So basically what we need to do is to try to make this in, in our markdown and export it basically in PDF. Uh, for now, I hope that you all would understand what we need to do and I hope you will take some time and try to emulate this PDF. I'll link the PDF and the tutorial markdown in the video description below. Uh, I will show you how I can do this in my next video. For now, I'll thank you for watching. Uh, really thank you for watching because this is kind of something I need to do. And we'll see you in the next one. Bye!